All right, so I decided I didn't want to do any more videos. I'm like, all right, I'll do one more. And then the next video I have to create is this lovely one. Not uh, the most exciting or quickest problem to go and do. But what I'm going to try to do is show you how to graph the ellipse given this equation. Now, when graphing an ellipse, we want to make sure that it's um, in our kind of vertex form where we're, or our center form where we know where the center is, as well as how to identify the major and the uh, minor axis. This is not in that format. And so to do that, we need to complete the square. We need to get two binomials squared, right? We want to get it as x minus h squared, y minus k squared, right? We want to get those binomials squared. So to do that, the first thing we do is I'm going to group the x's and the y's together. And remember, we want it to set equal to 1 at the end. So we'll get the constant over to the right side. So I have 3x squared minus 18x plus 4y plus 24y. I'm sorry, that's 4y squared. Um, equals negative 3. So I subtracted 3 on both sides. And then I just regroup them together. Now, again, what we're trying to do is we want to create perfect square trinomials. Right now, if you just kind of look at these, we just have two binomials, right? I want to create two perfect square trinomials. So to do that, I have to complete the square. But to complete the square, we got to make sure that we fact we our quadratic terms have a coefficient of 1. So I'm going to factor out their common, uh, common factor, which in this case, for the x's, would be 3. So therefore, I'm left with x squared minus 6, 6x, um, plus here, the common factor would be 4. So y squared plus 6y equals negative 3. OK. So now, to create the perfect square trinomial, I need to take b divided by 2 and square it. And remember, b comes from ax squared plus bx plus c. That is standard form of a quadratic, where b is the coefficient of your linear term. So I'm just going to take negative 6 divided by 2, square it. Negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is equal to a positive 9. Here I have 6 divided by 2 is 3. And I get 3 squared is equal to 9. Cool, I actually have the exact same ones. That's going to be kind of interesting. Um, I don't think I've actually ever had a problem like this. I like this problem. Um, so now I'm going to add these two values inside of both of my parentheses. So now I have 3 times x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus 4 times y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals negative 3. OK? So by adding 9, what I have done is I've created a perfect square trinomial, a binomial that I can factor down, or trinomial, I'm sorry, I can factor down into a binomial squared, meaning a factor multiplied by itself. And you can see there's, they're exactly the same. The only difference is here my middle term is negative, here my middle term is positive. So by factoring these, I obtain 3 times, oops, sorry, I got a little too quick to myself. All right, so I added 9 inside the parentheses, right? But since I added 9 on the left side, I also have to make sure I add 9 to the right side. And notice that this 9 is being multiplied by 3. That means this 9 has to be multiplied by 3. But then I just didn't add 9 once, though. I add 9 again. And that 9 is being multiplied by 4. So I need to add 9 again, and then this time multiply that one by 4. Sorry, sometimes I get a little excited, and I move ahead. All right, so by factoring this down, I get 3 times x minus 3 squared plus 4 times y plus 3 squared equals, now I just need to combine these. So really, it's negative 3 plus uh, 27 uh, plus 36. So that's going to be 24, 50, 60. Okay? So when I add these all up, I get 60. OK, now remember, the equation of the ellipse is equal to 1. So therefore, uh, I need to get that to 1, so I divide by 60. Now, remember, the 60 divides into both of these expressions. OK? So therefore, 60 divided by this, I get x minus 3 squared over 20. Plus here, um, uh, I get 15. y plus 3 squared over 15 equals 1. OK, so now we found the equation. We haven't even started graphing though yet. Um, so I'm going to erase this and graph above. Isn't this fun? All right. 
So now we know, we look at this and we say, all right, the larger of my two numbers is under uh, my x. So therefore, I know the major axis is horizontal. Therefore, from the center, I'm going to have a, I'm going to go horizontally to define the foci and the vertices. Um, so the general equation is x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Perfect. OK. So, so now to graph this, the first, let's just kind of start writing down what we need to know and then how to graph. So the first thing I always like to know is where is the center? Well, the center is h comma k. So in this case, we can say the center is at, um, remember, it's always opposite of h, opposite of k. So it's going to be 3 comma negative 3. Yes. So on my graph, I go um, positive 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. And I just label that with a c as a center. Actually, I'll go above because it's a major axis. All right, so the next thing is determining uh, your vertices. Ooh, we've got to find foci too. OK, so the vertices have a distance of the center, a distance from the center. On, now, remember, our major axis is horizontal, right? Um, so we're going to go in left right. But the vertices, the distance from the center to one of your, uh, to a vertex is the, is the distance of a. So I need to figure out what a is. Right now, I know a squared is equal to 20. So a is equal to the square root of 20. Now, you can find the exact value. You know, we can rationalize this. And when we find the exact points, um, I like to simplify that. 4 times um, 5, which is equal to 2 square root of 5. However, when graphing, we kind of want to know what the decimal is, right? So we know it's approximation. It's going to be between 4 and 5. It's some decimal in between 4 and 5. So I'm going to go to the right, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So in between 4 and 5, and also to the left, between 4 and 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I'll say vertex, vertex. Um, so when labeling, though, the vertices, I'm going to use actually the, the, apps, the, the exact distance and say, all right, so from the center, I added 2 square root of 5 and I subtracted 2 square root of 5. Well, the x value of the center is 3. So I'd say 3 plus or minus 2 square root of 5 comma negative 3. As you notice, they all have the same y coordinate. Um, next thing, let's do the covertices. I'll put those over here. So the covertices um, have a distance of b. Well, b, <laughs> another fun one, b squared equals 15. So therefore, b equals the square root of 15. Now, this one we can't simplify, which that's fine. Um, but we still need to be able to identify what is like the decimal version of that. Well, um, it's going to be anywhere between uh, 9 and 4, probably, not 9, I'm sorry, 3 and 4, right? Because 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So it's going to be some decimal between 3 and 4. So that's going to be on the minor axis, because b represents the distance to the covertices, which is perpendicular to my, um, which is perpendicular to my major axis. So I'm going to go between 3 and 4, so up 1, 2, 3, Four, so sum a decimal there, and down three, down three in a decimal, one, two, three, four. So down somewhere in between. So that's a covertex, covertex. Now notice how for the covertices, I went from the center, I add and subtracted the square root of 15 from the y coordinate as the x coordinate stay the same. So my, so my vert covertices are going to be 3 comma negative 3 plus or minus square root of 15. Take note the difference between how I wrote the covertices and the vertices. Right? Covertices, since this is a horizontal major axis, I add plus or minus to the x-axis. And I added subtract to the y-coordinate um, for the covertices. The last one is going to be the foci. Now, to find the foci, we've got to know c squared. And the relationship we have for c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared for ellipses. So c squared equals 20 minus 15. c squared is equal to 5. So therefore, c is equal to the square root of 5, right? Take the square root of both sides. OK, so to find the foci, I'll do this on the same side. Um, remember, the foci is on the major axis. It's on the same axis as the vertices center and the other, or the vertex center and the other vertex. So therefore, I'm going to be adding left and right from the center, just like I did with the vertices. Um, again, to estimate this, this is going to be you know, between 4 uh, or I'm sorry, 2 
and uh, 3. So it's going to be left 2, 2 in a decimal, and right 2 in a decimal. I mean, you can find the exact value again if you want to. Um, there we go. There's my lovely equation on my lips. And then to write my um, exact values of my foci, I'm just going to take my x coordinate of my center, which is 3, add and subtract um, square root of 5, which cannot be simplified. And then you notice that it also has the same um, y coordinate as the center and the vertices. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write an ellipse in the standard form, as well as graph the ellipse. Thanks.